Thank you for joining us for the webinar, Taking Higher Education to the Next Level, Leveraging AI for Student Success. I am excited to introduce Lukeman Ramsey, Global Public Sector Solution Manager, Google Cloud, and Manju Devadas, CEO, Pluto7, Azure Speakers. They will share insights and cover how the pandemic continues to have severe adverse effects on higher education institutions that range from dropping revenues to supporting remote learning, how there is a path forward by adopting cloud computing and AI-driven solutions, and how Pluto 7 AI solutions for higher education can help and has helped others. We will share stories from USC and the University of New Mexico success stories. Without further ado, I would like to turn it over to Lukeman. Welcome everybody. My name is Luke Ramsey. I'm the Global Solution Manager for Public Sector at Google Cloud. I do extensive work in the education space uh, with Google, uh, developing solutions for higher education customers. Uh, and I'm really excited to uh, be here today with our partner Pluto7 to talk about some of the solutions that we've worked together with Pluto7 to build uh, to help institutions manage and navigate the, uh, the challenges associated with the pandemic. Um, and uh, we're going to talk today about uh, some of those challenges as well as some of the solutions that uh, uh, we have worked together with Pluto7 to deliver uh, to institutions to, to help them navigate those and um, in particular around um, deploying AI and machine learning uh, in various ways to, to help uh, institutions manage the, the, these challenges. So uh, what are those challenges? Well, as we all know, institutions are um, facing declining revenue streams. Uh, the, the shift to online learning has been a costly one for many institutions. And uh, at the same time, uh, the absence of students on campuses uh, and uh, the inability to hold sporting events and um, you know, to uh, uh, harness the normal revenue streams that having associated with having students on campus uh, has, uh, has really hurt revenue streams uh, across the board for many institutions. Uh, the shift to remote learning itself has also been costly, um, you know, for those institutions that didn't have an extensive online learning capability prior to the pandemic, they've had to stand that up in a very short period of time. And even for those institutions that did have uh, online learning uh, infrastructure in place, uh, there's a big difference between delivering part of your in, uh, coursework and course load uh, online and uh, having to do the entire uh, set of instruction online. And so that has uh, been both a uh, logistical and operational challenge, as well as a revenue challenge uh, and, and been very expensive uh, for many institutions to put into place. Um, and for students and parents, as we all know, there's been a, a backlash against uh, the, uh, the, the uh, um, shift to remote learning. Uh, students and parents in many cases are demanding tuition rebates. Uh, they're refusing to pay fees or, you know, feel that uh, it's unfair and, um, uh, you know, uh, and understandably so that it's unfair for them to pay the same price for uh, an experience that's just not the same um, as being on campus. Um, you know, many, in many cases, uh, students are deferring enrollment or, um, um, you know, or, or uh, de declining to enroll altogether. And so this has created additional challenges for institutions as well. And so uh, what we would like today is uh, to emphasize not just the challenges around uh, the adoption of remote learning and um, the operational um, shifts that uh, have gone along with that, um, and not just the, um, the, the uh, challenges associated with recruitment, recruitment, admissions, and enrollment, and the IT investment, but also the opportunities, the opportunities that are uh, have been afforded by uh, the, these um, uh, this shift uh, the, that to put into place infrastructure and operations and um, new ways of delivering learning and new ways of harnessing data that can not only improve the experience during the pandemic but hopefully carry over afterwards and and really improve the delivery of education after the pandemic and after things return to normal. Uh, these, are, these include things like deploying new personalized learning experiences powered by AI and ML, um, uh, putting into place virtual campus operations that can help universities scale enrollment and scale the delivery of ed education even after the pandemic, uh, expanding uh, student services and the automation of student services using things like AI-driven chatbots, 
um, and really accelerate uh, the digital transformation uh, around recruitment, admissions, and enrollment uh, in ways that can really benefit institutions going forward after the pandemic. And we'd also like to emphasize the, the benefits of cloud for higher education. Again, um, the movement to cloud has been something we've seen across the higher education space. And obviously, Google Cloud has been working closely with our, our institution, with our partners and, and many our, of our customers in the higher ed space to help enable them to do that. Uh, but uh, more than ever now in this era that we live in, uh, the, the need and the, uh, the uh, benefits of cloud uh, can, can really help uh, to address and allay some of those uh, challenges uh, that I mentioned before. Uh, things like, um, you know, making it uh, much easier to scale resources, uh, to simplify IT operations, uh, to enable research teams to harness uh, the power of cloud computing, uh, and also hopefully to, uh, you know, uh, make more satisfied students and parents uh, by making resources available 24-7 uh, using, again, things like AI-driven chatbots. Uh, so, um, you know, more than ever, uh, the, uh, the benefits of cloud for higher education are, are, are really important. And uh, we hope that, uh, that uh, you as uh, institutional customers can, can um, harness that. Uh, so here at Google Cloud, we've done a lot of work in applying AI and machine learning to remote learning and to the delivery of education. Um, and we really believe that um, institutions that harness data, uh, that use data analytics and the insights that can be gained from data, uh, and then apply those uh, insights to the delivery of education to surface uh, the, the learning progress of their students and understand better the students that may be at risk um, or maybe, um, uh, you know, uh, to help students uh, uh, in, to intervene in students earlier that are at risk um, can, can really um, uh, be a huge benefit to uh, well, student satisfaction and, and also to help uh, re retain those students. Um, so we really worked with, with a lot of institutions and with our partners like Pluto7 to develop self-service solutions uh, for things like student advising and, um, and for AI tutors, which I will talk about uh, in, in uh, just a little bit. Um, and, you know, it's, it's really important to, to note that AI and machine learning can, can deliver, help deliver personalized and engaging education. Uh, there is a, a game-changing shift underway now with the new capabilities that we have in AI that can allow for things like automated grading, things like the automated generation of assessment, um, the um, ability to, to uh, um, use AI and, and machine learning to uh, generate real-time analytics to give uh, instructors and administrators deeper insight into what students are doing. Uh, you know, things like uh, proctoring solutions that can help uh, using AI to um, help uh, uh, deliver more effective proctored uh, uh, exams for remote students. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, things like student assistant chatbots built using AI uh, to provide 24 seven assistance to students. So um, we really believe here at Google that AI and machine learning are gonna be vital to successful remote learning, not just during the pandemic, but afterwards as well. So we're um, going to spend some time now uh, talking in more detail about how you can leverage AI for student success. Uh, I'm gonna turn things over to Manju where he's gonna go into much more detail about the different solutions that Pluto7 has built uh, to address these needs, to using AI to, to power student success. But before I do that, I just wanted to mention uh, specifically a program that Google Cloud has been working on and um, uh, in this space, applying uh, AI to build tutors for assisted learning so that um, uh, we can automatically generate uh, personalized content for students, uh, you know, things like individualized quizzes, uh, automatically generating assessment from directly from learning content. Uh, generating recommendations uh, for students to uh, help drive the, the, uh, their choices in learning. Um, and uh, this is uh, something that we've spent a lot of effort on over the past couple years. Uh, we've built an AI tutor platform that allows uh, third parties to build AI tutor apps. So it offers a, several APIs and services powered by AI to enable a number of different AI powered learning experiences. 
uh, this, these experiences can integrate in, uh, with Google Docs. Uh, they can be offered in a variety of different channels on mobile, uh, on desktop. Um, and uh, we really feel that this is going to be a hugely important area for both Google and, and uh, the uh, education space as a whole. And so we placed a lot of emphasis on that and um, are really excited about our capabilities here that we've built. Um, you know, and just for example, you know, uh, just to kind of, you know, provide more evidence or more detail about what these AI tutor experiences can uh, provide, uh, just imagine if a professor, when they're creating a new course content, rather than having to author all of that content themselves or to take um, learning content from a textbook and, and then you, uh, generate using that content, generate quizzes and assignments and formative assessment and summative assessment from that content. Uh, instead, if the AI can do that in an automated way, uh, of course, you know, with the ability of the professor or, or teaching assistants to, to review that content, but uh, to really alleviate the, uh, the large amount of effort that it takes for course content to be created. And so those are some of the things that we're focusing on with our AI tutor capabilities. Uh, in our AI Tutor platform. And uh, we really would love to hear from uh, any of uh, you who are interested to, to, to follow up and um, uh, talk about how we might be able to work with you to build uh, learning experiences on that platform. Uh, and just a note that uh, we work very closely with our partners like Pluto7 when we, when we do those engagements. Um, and, and Pluto7 is one of our most trusted partners in education. Um, and and their, their expertise in this arena of AI applied to machine learning is one of the reasons why we've um, uh, view them as a, a really important partner in this space. So uh, with that, I'd like to hand it over to Manju where he can go into much more detail about many of the solutions that Pluto7 has built and delivered to the higher education space. Thank you, Lukman. It was an amazing walkthrough in terms of how Google has been contributing to one of the biggest revolution that we have seen, at least in my lifetime, education institutions getting disrupted with their value proposition. As Pluto7 works with various education institutions, education tech companies, schools, we see problem arising at different levels, whether it's educators or the administrators or IT staff working within the, within the education institutions, or students for that matter, trying to find information. If you look at their struggles today, all the experiences that they had in the physical world is now being shrunk into a digital world where everything has to be delivered through a screen. And this is not the world we imagined would happen at such a rapid pace. And if you look at the three key problems that arise us is, organizing all the content of knowledge that the education institution has produced or the professor has produced over years, presenting it to the student so that the student comprehends what helps with their learning journey, and then assessing the student to ensure that they're getting the value out of the learning experience. Lukman mentioned early on that now the parents are wondering, am I getting enough value out of what I pay? for my student or for my son. Now, the, the, it's not just about justifying the value, it is about making it even better. And that's where the platform that we have all been using for many other purposes in life, from Google Maps to Google Search and everything else, which really helped us organize and find our information or the answers to make decisions, we are applying the same thing for education. And as we look at these scenarios, as I'm working with various customers, my team works with various customers, what it almost always comes down to, how are we saving time? Saving time for the educators, saving time for the students, saving time for the, for the education uh, institution administrators. When we now look at the problems that are in front of these, let's take just a student and the educator or the professor, they now need to use the same amount of time that they have available in the day to, to deal with the technology, to find information, to respond to students through digital means, and assess them differently. They have been now deprived of the fact that they don't have any of those physical interaction, what they could have. What we are now having AI 
help or enable is really reimagine education. At the end of the day, if you look at the knowledge or the information, the way we see it is whether it's in the form of a paper on the, on the printed paper or a video or an image, text, speech as we narrate it, all of this data is now converted in a digital form that can be hosted in a cloud platform like Google Cloud Platform. With that, you're able to now organize your data and allows us to reimagine education. When we reimagine education, we need to not just think about how to solve the current problem, but how can we shape the future? How can we get more closer to the student and personalize the education for them? What can we learn about the student's interaction with the courses, the curriculum, the videos they watch? How engaged are they? How can we now assess them better so that we really understand the interest of not what they explicitly state, but what's implied or implicit or what, what we can say, read between the lines of what they're not ex actually saying it, but their actions are indicating that this is what they're interested in. In other words, we are now looking at how do we make education more immersive? And we'll walk you through how that's happening with AI. The value in any education institution that is trying to demonstrate to a student or, or to a parent is really about making sure that the student gets a, a good learning and a good career path set for them. Now, for that, it is every student is going to be different. We always knew that. However, the education system always had to generalize it just because personalization was expensive. We now have a golden opportunity to personalize education. To do that, we first need to transform the way we run education. Platforms like Google Cloud and AI helps that. And the, for, for, along with that, we can also rethink about how universities are running their operations, all the way from even how you select a, a student, how you manage enrollment, how you respond to the student about the midterm exams and many such aspects. In other words, when you start a journey in transforming your university education, it is going to be a multi-year journey, but it's important to start the journey early on. If you start with the university operations, university operations has many aspects, whether it's student enrollment, managing fees, managing and maintaining your website with course curriculums, the catalog of courses, managing interaction between students and the administration office, managing interaction between the students and the professors. Now, you need to have that interaction be more efficient than what it is. The interaction cannot be burdensome because it's taking away the core time away from the opera operations administrator or the professor in serving and understanding the student's needs. This is where some of the elements that Lukman mentioned whether it's centralizing the information about the student or even grading assignments. If AI can help as a digital twin, assist them to take to some extent, then the professor can provide additional oversight and make the final call. Some of the aspects or capabilities that Lukman mentioned helps not just the universities run operationally more efficient by understanding the student's need, responding to the need, but also helping the professors and the, the uh, evaluators uh, evaluate the grading and assignment better and also being more fair to the student by comparing and contrasting, leveraging the learning that the AI gets over a period of time. When we think about using smart analytics for student success, if I have to define smart analytics, it is combining your data warehouse, the dashboards that you have, AI, machine learning. If you take all these different elements put together, it really comes down to collect all your information in one place, make decisions, decisions about what, what answer to provide to a, a student's inquiry about simple things like, is, uh, is, is tomorrow a holiday? Or enriching a student with recommending the videos that they might like. They watch something on, on uh, geological surveys, and then the next thing they want to see is about statistics 
uh, related to that. And applying machine learning maybe even for those geological assessment. Now, how do you know that all these things exist? It is by centralizing the information and then connecting the information, correlating to what the students is interested in, in learning. And if you apply these smart analytics, you not only will be able to correlate the information and it really comes down to assessing one student at a time. Because like we said, each student is different. In a university setting, we deal with many different entities or, or departments. There could be research department, there could be uh, the administrative departments, or there could be um, your, your classes, curriculums by your business school. If you take an example of University of Southern California, we deal with all these different departments. And in this example, in the research department of Keck School, where we looked at clinical trials, the clinical trials, if you think about it, hundreds of pages of documents, which has to be scanned through identify certain, certain protocol information to determine if a patient can be administered with a certain medicine. And to do that, we used document AI and Google Cloud or all the rest of the smart analytics capability to centralize, organize the data. And when we did build the model, the model was able to not only identify and answer the question whether the patient qualifies for the medicine and the insurance corresponding to it or not, it also did with higher accuracy. What this opened is the doors to potential saving of not just the time, but improving the accuracy of such research and assessment. It is the platform which is designed to handle half the world's data. When you apply for such complex research, the kind of insights you get is pretty amazing. Similarly, when we worked with another university, University of New Mexico, as a part of their eco program, where they had hundreds and thousands of potential um, or, or collaborators who would interact with each other to exchange knowledge and information about diagnosis, about treatments, and all these various aspects of knowledge exchange when they needed a platform uh, which is not only innovative, where they can do things what they couldn't do before, they looked at Google Cloud. And when we started the journey for them with Google Cloud, we introduced to them early on in the journey on what is machine learning, what is AI, demystified it. And a few years back, uh, if you look at AI and machine learning, uh, it was seen as this magical, uh, magical technology where you feed information and, and you get insights. And there is nothing magical about it. It's just a lot of math run on a, a, a platform like Google Cloud where you can, you can get it at an incredibly low cost, your results at an incredibly low cost. But when you apply that for real world example where you have to correlate information among tens and thousands of documents and you enable that through a chatbot where you put a question and you get an answer, that appears magical. Now, for University of New Mexico and, and such universities, we work with Temple and many other such universities, enabling students with chatbots, enabling professors with chatbots, enabling even potential uh, uh, candidate student who is considering uh, registering for the university, these kind of simple technologies are making difference. Having seen this problem repeatedly and knowing that these are capabilities that many universities need, we built a solution called Education ML 2.0. It is about student experience. It is knowing that every student is going to be different. The information and the digital trail that they leave, whether watching a video or the websites they visited on the courses or the chat interactions they had, uh, or even looking at the information in the canvas or Blackboard, looking at all those information and understanding their interest, and also more importantly, knowing what their career journey and path is. It's important to leverage those data, whether it is coming through a systematic feed that they're typing in or a footprint that they're leaving, analyzing that data so that you serve the end goal, which is the value proposition for the fees that they paid. The platform over here enables, the Google Cloud platform enables predictive analytics and analytics insight to be able to mine such information 
and present when the student is watching a video and if he's trying to build expertise in statistics, show them related videos where others have found it useful. Make sure that the courses that they take are, are related and it helps them towards the graduation. Now, when we look at across the world, you see that many education institutions are looking for ways to address newer concerns that have come up. Is, are, we, are we getting enough value out of the fees we pay? Are we uh, able to save uh, time because now the professors have to uh, not only prepare for the class, but they also need to get comfortable with the technology. This is where enabling these technologies as a digital twin becomes important so that the professors are really spending time and understanding the student rather than figuring out how to respond and even addressing some of the common challenges of just matching text and, and things like that to, to uh, grade an assignment and the, some of those Capabilities, Google is working on it, what, what Lukman mentioned, leveraging those puts the professor on an advantage so that they can spend time really understanding what the student wants or things that AI cannot answer for them. To get started, what we have done is typically we have taken the universities through a journey and it starts with a simple workshop. These workshops are complimentary for two hours where Zero to seven uh, resources. These are machine learning data scientists, data engineers. They work with the university faculty or or the depa operations department uh, to understand what what is it that they're trying to do. Where are they in the journey of collecting the data, organizing the data, and applying AI, uh, and and whether they need to be informed about how these work or take what they have done to the next level. We do a, a quick two hour workshop, then define the proof of concept for four to six weeks. If it works out well and, and uh, the success rate is pretty high with this, then we convert them into production pilots so that they can apply that for a real class, like enabling a chatbot, enabling uh, video recommendations. And then upon successful pilot for one or two classes, then they can apply that for rest of the universities. And then you do the post-production assessment to make sure that that uh, it is yielding the results that they intended to. And more importantly, here you are sure demonstrating newer value to the parents, to the, uh, to the professors or, or to the students in leveraging this AI, which is saving them time and making education more personalized. We have done many proof of concepts, many workshops and have built methodologies where these things have predictable time in terms of conducting workshops to doing a POC to deployment, it can range anywhere from four to eight weeks or 10 weeks, and then the journey continues. Now more than ever, it's really important to digitally transform education. I have kids myself and I'm seeing what they are going through, what their teachers are going through, and what the schools and institutions are going through. Innovation is at its best when we leverage platforms like Google Cloud, and we are here to help you. It's much easier than you think. It's simpler and faster than you think. And we have done this many times. Reach out to us to get started and for taking the time and listening to us. Thank you. Thank you, Lukman and Google for your support.